Howard, both of you doing today, and it's good to speak with you again, Meech. Good to speak with you again, brother. <laughs> I, can tell, love I can tell you y'all had a long day today, so I won't keep y'all too long. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> Now, um, this season coming up, um, I'm really excited for it, and I believe that this is going to be quite an explosive one. So how the both of you are approaching this season, especially for you, Neo, since this is going to be your debut on the season? Um, Well, before before anything, I had to, you know, get caught up on, on the first two seasons just to see where the story is at and, and uh, you know, uh, just just figure out where where it is I fit in the whole situation. You know, I didn't want to I didn't want to walk in blind. And then secondly, I have the utmost respect for a lot of the actors in the show. So you know, I, again, I wanted to make sure that I came in and, and was uh came in and and fit. You know, didn't look like uh all right, who's who's the, here come the R and B dude trying to do some acting and 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 he ain't you know he ain't fitting the bill. You know, what I'm saying I wanted to make sure that that I, I that I made sense with everybody that was there as well. So yeah, man, I, I just approached it like. Like any other, like any other task that I've that I've never done before, you know, do a little research and then get in there and give it your all, and that's that's what it was. How about you, uh, Demetrius? Man, same here. You know, um, we're we're going off in the third season. This isn't just the introduction anymore. You know, we're knee deep into the story now, so we get to see how different the brothers really are, even though they're similar. They have similar ways. They're really different. You know, Terry doesn't want to go to Atlanta like Meech, but Meech decides to leave their hometown, Detroit, and go to Atlanta because he sees Atlanta is better for expansion. It's better for the business. It's better for what he's trying to do. You know, Atlanta is the hub of the United States with highways and freeways going to all different types of places, you know, in the country. So that's the best place for Meech. And he has to come and build a new crew, build a new family, you know. Now that he's going to be out there by himself, he has to navigate through this new environment without his brother. You know, he has to use different tactics, you know, because he's in a new town where people don't know him and don't trust him. But Yeah, I wanted to know um, for this season, um, how often are you bouncing off ideas between you and your dad on what works for the TV and what doesn't? I, I talk to my father, if not every day, every other day. You know, sometimes the prison, you know, they, they the phone calls change. But when I talk to him, he he basically lets me know everything that he feels like I should do better or I should change. You know, he also tells me what he loves, but he makes sure he tells me how he wants certain things to be portrayed because all he ever wanted was people to know the real him. You know, documentaries don't really tell the real about everything, you know. Sometimes things are are, are exaggerated, you know. So in, in this show, he wants me to show people exactly how he really was and the things that he really chose to do and decisions that he really made. So, yeah, I definitely... And uh, I, I haven't had a whole lot of conversations with, with, with Big Meech. But uh, again, just coming into the thing, I wanted to make sure that that I was I was doing you know doing the show justice, doing the character justice, you know, um, just 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 doing it the right way, you know. So again, you you do some research, you get in there, and you give it your all, and uh, you hope that the people who really lived it look at it and go, ah, uh, yeah, you did that. That's 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 the you know that's the end goal. Thank the both of you for your time today. I've been reviewing ever since uh, the first season. I enjoy the show very much, especially seeing all the chains that's on that show. It costs probably more than my student loans used to cost. <laughs> yeah, man. Hope you all have a great day. All love, brother. Take it easy, man. All right. Um, how the both of you doing today? Uh, we got BMF season three coming up, and I can tell the both of you are excited as I am. <laughs> Super yeah, excited. It's great to meet you. Great to meet you as well. And I should have said my name at the start. It's Julian with the Nocturnal. I apologize. All good. <clears throat> now, um, I shall begin my questions. Um, What I liked about the last season was how the story was very tight in and well put together. Uh, how much more explosive is it going to get for the third season? 
it's it's definitely an explosive season. I think a word that we had for this season or a phrase was uh space baby. And Oh, so yeah. that's sort of like, you know, the the theme of this season was trying to just take it everything to space. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Nicole? Um, I agree. She 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 said that well. It's an explosive season, I think, in in every way, um, for the boys and and for the women, um, you know, for Lucille especially, you know, breaking out and doing some new things that she's never done before. A lot of surprises. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with everything with Lucille went through, I can imagine things are going to turn in a different direction. That's right. <laughs> she she might do some things that she's never done before. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> now going to my next question: um, How much are we going to see the character development between the both of you since we didn't really have it that much on the previous season? Mm. Um, I think that we've, we've been saying we sort of just in our talks, we figured out that um, Nicole and Lucille have a lot of character parallels this season. Um, we're both, you know, discovering ourselves and, and becoming, you know, individuals and trying new things. Nicole, from the guise of sort of growing up and she's a teenager and so she's exploring what life means to her. But I'll let Miss Nicole talk about what it means for, for Lucille. No, I, I, I agree with all that, that, you know, there, there are these parallels and then trying to um, uh, still find the, the mutual respect for one another, because it's, I, I think, hard for Lucille to allow uh, Nicole to grow up. And it's like, whoa, wait, one, you're rebellious, you got a sassy yeah. mouth sometimes, and you, you trying to look at some boy, wait a minute, what, what is going on here? And then I think, you know, seeing me like uh take the same journeys watching her mom go through like a similar thing it's like what 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 is that like when you know dad is still here at home and you know but we're just discovering and it's just i think kind of weird to see each other go through this process a little bit and my final one for the both of you, um, ever since y'all both been on the BMF show, have y'all found a new uh, about appreciation for the city of Detroit? Absolutely. I, I definitely have. I'm I'm a Georgia girl, so I'm Southern all the way. I I had never <laughs> um been to Detroit before shooting the show, but it's it has such a culture. I was able to go to the uh, Motown Museum, the the Museum of of Music there, and it was absolutely amazing just to read about all of the different you know musical legends that have come out of Detroit, and then just you know being able to talk with fans at times. One of the major um, feedbacks for the show that we get is how. Uh, you know, how great it is for them to see their city represented on the screen. And I think that's really important. So I'm humbled to be a part of this for that reason alone. How about you, Nicole? Um, I, I would say, yeah, it's been like, I, I'm from Chicago, actually. So it's like right next door. And there are so many um, similarities, but it is kind of a smaller town than Chicago. But I do appreciate, especially from Randy Huggins, the show's creator, um, you know, his passion for Detroit and how much he expresses that to us and how he has expressed that in the writing. And, you know, everybody, Detroit folks are so proud um, to 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 be from there, they just it's, they're just so proud, and it's it's um it's a really cool thing. We got to go there. Um, uh, we've we've shot there sometimes, but particularly in the first season, um, we shot there. There was this whole block party in the first season, and it was really um, I was so glad we got to go there because it was definitely a different feeling um, than you know we shoot in Atlanta um, and. Um, it was just great to get the real feeling of what the city is like and, and all the, the real people showed up for this block party and to really experience them and their passion and their understanding of the real BMF and all this is just like, uh, it's amazing to be a part of this real story from this real um, authentic city. It's great. Pretty great insights. Uh, thank the both of you for your time today. Can't wait for this next season to come out. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.
So how are you doing today, Morgan? And it's good to see you again, Kelly. Hello. Hey, awesome. Well, this season is coming up, and it seems like the both of you are going to be paired as partners for the season of uh, BMF. Um, break down what led to this and what can we expect? Well, I think that, um, you know, Jin is back you know, has been demoted. And so she is back on the street, you know, just a beat cop and, and uh, they gave her a new partner, which is Morgan. I, you know, they really should have chosen somebody much less good looking. I think, <laughs> you know, in my opinion, <laughs> you know, a little too much competition here going on here, but, uh, but, you know, I, I, I tested her. She was doing, you know, she did quite well. She lived up to the challenge. And, uh, and you know, I think you see a, a wonderful bond between these two characters. Yes. Was that to add to that, Morgan? No, yes, um, absolutely. No, she took it all. That's, that's amazing there, yes. <laughs> you know, this leads to my next question for you, Morgan. Um, did you audition for any other character um, prior to getting this role? I did not. Um, I only auditioned for Detective Amberson, and I was actually intimidated by auditioning for her, playing her just in general, because I was always just so afraid of like cop roles and detective roles. I'm like, I don't know, do I fit in that world? The jargon, um, understanding, you know, the fabric of these characters. And, um, but I, I was so blessed and grateful to be a part of BMF, such an amazing story that I was like, no girl, you are going to figure this out and you are going to, you know, work really hard to tell this story. So I, I just feel so grateful that I'm able to do so. It. Thank you. <laughs> and now I want to play detectives. Like, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> This goes to my next question for the both of you. Um, since being on the show, did y'all find a new appreciation for Detroit in general when it comes to either its history or some of the landmarks? Absolutely. You know, yeah, I did a lot of research about the 80s, you know, from season two um, and uh, Detroit at that time with their Chinatown and and the whole relocation and and, you know, Asians in particular during that time, you know, there was so much turmoil uh, within the Asian community. Uh, it was it was very, very interesting. And um, and then I got to go to Detroit to to shoot part of season two, but I didn't get to see much of it because I got COVID there. <laughs> so I need better memories. I need to go back to Detroit and really develop some better memories about the city. <laughs> What about you, Morgan? I would say for me, yes. I mean, it's dripping in culture, especially in this time frame. So, you know, the culture, the historical uh, stories and background uh, that they're able to, the music, just the clothing, the hair. They started, I think a lot of people think that, and I don't know, they might take me down for this, but I think a lot of people think that the, you know, the black hair, um, phenomenon started in Atlanta and a lot of it started in Detroit. And so, and they brought that over to Atlanta. So there's just a lot of culture there, the music there. Um, and I think just the family, you know, a lot of them migrated from the South to Detroit to make things happen for their family. There's a lot of black, um, families and culture there where they just have this this tightness and this need to like survive and to make it and so we get a lot of legendary stories out of Detroit so I learned a lot you know from doing my research and stuff on BMF but you know just so much about the city itself yeah glad it's not a war zone over there no more <laughs> I know <laughs> that is appreciative <laughs> Well, thank the both of you for your time today. Uh, Kelly, I also joined you on Mortal Kombat 1. It's one of oh, my thank you. <laughs> one of my favorites of the series. <laughs> yeah, I see your chair. You're a gamer. <laughs> I've been since the 90s. <laughs> um, Hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Julian with the Nocturnal. Um, BMF Season 3 is coming upon us. Uh, how are the both of you are feeling about this since the both of you are new cast members to the show? 
I'm feeling real good. I'm really excited to have the character that I play uh, come out and show what she's made of. Uh, it's it feels like sitting on a golden egg. You know what I mean? Um, and like I'm I'm ready to 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 share that egg. You know, make an omelet or however people like their eggs. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, it's been a surreal experience. I mean, quite a whirlwind. I've learned so many things as an individual and as an artist. So ten out of ten experience. How about you, Christopher? Uh, I would say people are not ready for this character of of Henry. And not only are they not ready for that particular character, but they're not ready also for the dynamic between Blaze, whom I play, and Henry together as father and daughter. It's it's a it's a powerful, uh complex and unpredictable dynamic there and i'm i can't tell you how excited i am for people to see this season and all the different storylines but obviously in particular this storyline that occurs between the two of us because whoo i i got one word for you julian electric i will take your word for it because this show i like the power show is very unpredictable and i like how y'all I'll brought that up, which leads to my next question. Uh, what's going to be the character dynamic dynamic between the both of you? Yeah, so 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 Christopher, he plays my father, Blaze, and he is, you know, he's the OG kingpin of the family organization. Oh, hello, beautiful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, Henry wants to take over the family organization, so to speak. Um, and so the dynamic is really at a butting heads, a fight for power. Um, and a fight for dominance um, between the parent and the child, which it, it can get real sticky and real uncomfortable and um, heartbreaking. But there's still, as um, Christopher has mentioned before, there's a, there's a lot of love underneath. There's, there's love that's underneath, but it is so hard packed with the reality of the game, um, of the society, of just, just, just trying to exist. Um, but it, when I tell you the tension is like, you could cut it with a knife anytime. Yep. Let's add to that, Christopher. Yes. Uh, Henry's desire to, to be a leader in my organization is understandable, but it comes with demands, demands that as Blaze, uh, I don't feel have been met yet. And those, those demands include trust, uh, loyalty, consistency, and showing that she's able to be an effective leader. That's, that's the problem, is that Henry goes about it in her own ways, and those ways, for me, aren't acceptable, nor are they effective. Because to me, at the end of the day, no matter what, you know, there are all these different ways to cut the cake in any given endeavor in life. If one's particular ways of cutting the cake are effective, great. Even if I don't understand the particular approach, it's got to be effective. And if it isn't effective and it's causing more problems than it is bringing about solutions and uh, success, then we have an issue. And that's the problem at the core of our dynamic. I've been, as Blaze, a very successful and continue to be a successful kingpin of my organization. So for my daughter to want to come in and say, let me have a, and prove to you that I can be in a, a, a role of leadership and be effective. Okay, let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. And if you're not coming with it and showing me results that speak for themselves, then you just talk. All right, uh, Julian with the Nocturnal. Like How are you boss. doing today, Heather? <laughs> That's it. It's a very long day for you coming up. Like a boss. Um, no, I'm happy to be here. Great to meet you. Speak Love to talking you about, about the show season. with the fans. <laughs> thank you, Julian. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Julian. I'm quite looking Sorry forward to season three. No, no, no. He's precious. This season's coming up. Exactly. It's going to be pretty damn explosive. <laughs> but my first question for you is, when it came to the development of the stories and the characters, how did you approach it for the season? Yeah, so we always have a theme in the writer's room. So season three is all about reinvention. And we start with um, 
We always have a character arc for each person. We know where we're starting them and then we put our goal of where we're taking them. And then we always find the most interesting way to get them there, all based around this year, this theme of reinvention. Awesome. Um, another question I would like to ask is because whenever I watch this show, I love of the historical footage along with all the set design and takes it really back to that era. Uh, how much of your, how much head did you have when it comes to getting all these elements uh, correct? You know, our writer's room really keeps all of us on top of that. Um, the historical montages, thank you for bringing this up because those are very important to our room and you'll see them a couple of times this season. Um, so we love doing that too. That was something that Randy Huggins infused season one and two. He's the creator and was the showrunner of the first two seasons. So we're always carrying that baton for him. Yeah, I brought it up because I've always paid attention to it. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And my next one for you, are there any episodes that really stand out to you for this season, especially since everybody's really looking for forward to how this is going to play out based on what we saw in the finale yeah i season five episode 405 is our you know midpoint turning point episode that's really explosive and um i'm also really excited about episode three that you saw um and our finale it's very different and um yeah it has some pretty big moments also yeah, especially since um, we're now going to see the war between the Black Mafia family and everywhere else. So yeah. trust is going to be a huge thing for this uh, season, too. Yes, no. And I mean, the brothers are, are now apart in different cities, right? So it creates great conflict and great drama because they're both navigating things without each other. They don't have to get approval from each other to make decisions. And then they find out secrets they're keeping from each other that leads to great drama also exactly uh thank you so much for your time today heather um it's crazy i was in los angeles last week for another show <laughs> you missed the rain then good for you no i was there for that rain oh you were okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much great to meet you julian thank you nice to meet you as well